While we wait to reopen the doors to our media studios at the Westport Library, we bring you music makers. People for whom music is their life and living. From session musicians to singer-songwriters, producers and maestros of music. A chance to hear their story and see their live film performances. Introducing Chrissy Gar. You are a writer that I consider to be just a, a superlative writer. I love the words of that that you've done and performed when we did our live show. So when we did First Thursday, and this relates to Megan, Megan was singing with you in uh, duet, and I think her brother was the drummer, wasn't he? So I am gonna show that footage. I am gonna actually oh, have our viewers, listeners see. If, uh, Thank you so much. The whole thing came together. And I remember we did it in that instance, we did it as a uh, theater in the round. So we were able to film all around you. And we got some lovely shots of the drums and from behind and so yeah that was beautifully done you guys did a gorgeous, amazing job my favorite thing i should say is is songwriting and 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 then that's the first and then next comes performing but one of the things i've done for many years that i think has helped my songwriting is friday night is a, a lot of piano piano lounge gigs and all that means is that i take i've been doing it for 15 years, I started in Chicago. So I did, I, I worked at a piano lounge called Davenport's Piano Bar and Cabaret for a while, where I like served cocktails and then would get up and sing. And then eventually they gave me their own night and, or my own night. And uh, I basically, I take any request that anybody has for the most part. If I've heard the song before, then I play. Like it doesn't matter if I've ever played it before in my life. In fact, for these gigs we've been doing in quarantine, I, I mean, I would say the last gig I did on Friday, 75% of what I did, I, I had never played before. I just have gotten pretty good, decent at sort of pulling it off, knowing how to figure out the chord structure and whatnot. And, you know, it feels like a party trick, but, you know, I've done it so many times that uh, I just go for it. It's just that it is feels, it's totally like improv in a way because it's just, I've never done this before, let's see what happens. Um, and all it is is in the middle of this quarantine, so I w I've been doing that in regular, you know, piano lounges around uh, lots in Chicago and then here at a specific spot, Crave in Ansonia. And um, I just basically, basically just like a lot of musician friends I know, you know, there was no prospect of performing probably until late summer. So all of my gigs were canceled and I was dying to play. And I honestly haven't embraced social media that much. Um, I, it has seemed foreign to me, but this particular situation that we're in has made me go well we'll just see what happens <laughs> so i've been every night i've been doing a different song on my music page and then on friday night i just had said you know what how about i just do my usual thing i'll put my little you know venmo tip jar handle up and um i'll donate 20 percent of what i make tonight to a waitress that i usually work with who's definitely not working tonight you know so we did it and it worked great and we and um i was able to give her a full shift pay and people had fun it felt like a big community thing and i played some original requests but also whatever you know if somebody requests lady gaga elton john billy joel eagles whatever play anything that they request and it became like a little community online and they were having fun with each other and then it grew. So last week we raised money for my next door neighbors and they did a performance through the window in the driveway. <laughs> That's a social distancing thing to an original song actually of mine. And we're just having fun and, and it's, it seemed like it grew, you know? And so this week there's more excitement. It's for another family. And then the following week we're gonna raise money for, um, I mean, I'm taking a cut because I need to stay afloat too, but um, we're raising money for, um, uh, art studio in my little neighborhood and so it's sort of what I can offer but it seems like right now this online thing I've never actually felt like my music kind of mattered more than right now because people seem to really crave connection in that way and so what was your background how did it happen that you became a regular performing musician and songwriter well I grew up playing classical music when I was little, so maybe 12 years of classical piano training. So that's where my training came in. And I kind of always knew I wanted to go in the direction of music, but I couldn't really find my voice until I played, I did theater and things like, and that's what I went to school for. And I really didn't start writing music until my mid twenties when I worked at that piano lounge I mentioned before. So, and it basically was because I learned to play, like playing classical music, I only played things written on the page. And then once I started to like play a little bit more by ear 
and now I play a lot by ear, but, and then uh, play based on chords and stuff. It opened up my world because it just allowed, I, and I, it, it allowed me to, well, because there's a crutch with classical music that you don't, you have to do it so exactly and so precisely how it's written. It's like my mind wasn't open yet to writing something, even though I do have little cassette tapes of me when I was like five recording songs. But then, but then when I was, that's when I started writing, I would stay at that piano lounge till three o'clock in the morning, just hearing things and, and putting them down. And the, the, and the process of playing other people's music and understanding really, really well at this point, uh, uh, song structure. There's always more to learn. I don't know a ton about, you know, I, I, there's always more to learn, but I do know quite a bit about song structure. So if I hear a melody in my head, and for me, that's how it happens. It's not, it's like I'll be walking down the street and think, it's usually when I'm doing something monotonous, when I'm thinking about nothing, when I'm washing the dishes, when I'm vacuuming, when I'm taking a jog, when I'm that's when I'll hear a melody in my head and then I race home and, or I have tons of ideas. And then the part of it that's more like a craft is the ability to put it, to write it down and figure out what the harmonies are supposed to be. That's the, that's the part to me that's like a craft. And that's where me playing other people's songs has really come into play because I can hear, I know where I'm supposed to, like, I know how I'm supposed to fill in the gaps, you know, because it's not just about the melody, it's the harmony that's underneath. But the, um, it really comes, it comes into my mind as if it already exists. So often what happens when I write something, almost every time I'll send a little piece of it to a friend and say, hey, is this a song and I just don't know it? <laughs> just tell me if I'm ripping somebody off and I don't know it. And that's the, um, that's the vibe. But then I've also done a lot of writing for, I founded a theater company with friends here in New Haven and it's actually done pretty well. It's called a Broken Umbrella Theater. And I've written eight or nine uh, musicals for them and that is a different process because I'm in the room while they're creating their work and it's like it's this but it, it's similar in the sense where I'm just focused on what they're doing and in, in being focused on what they're doing there's like it's like I hear music while I'm watching it and then I just am lucky enough to have the tools to be able to write it down because I think a lot of people might have that experience where they get like a little song in their head but don't know how to translate it so that's like that it, it's like that's the part where being a musician comes into play like mm -hmm. I feel like even being a songwriter and a musician sometimes are two different things but you see my cat come in <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so that's where that has helped me um the cat and the moose are <laughs> so I think so it's classical music into musical theater and then yeah. um this is Peter and uh, the musical thing. So I have a variety of different influences too. So that has allowed me to go in a lot of different directions. It's funny, in the moment, I don't know that I'm necessarily going in this direction, but those two songs you're gonna play, you'll hear my classical influence significantly. Yeah. There's, there's like breaks in it that are, you know, the, the piano is very much classical, you know, so I, I love mixing that with sort of a rock vibe, but I'm not doing it like, intentionally no. like there's no there's no like well i'm gonna write a piece that has a classical it's it's just that that's what the influences are and so that's what shows up and it's interesting what you say with the words thing because i was just having a conversation about this the other day when i'm writing lyrics when i'm writing a song the words come to me first as phonetics which i've heard a lot of people yeah. say so and i often feel like the words of a song if you take them out of the song they don't really land as much there's this magical mix between the the actual melody and the lyric line. I guess he really wants to be in this. <laughs> the the, uh, the uh, melody and the Is lyric line. Metro Goldwyn Mayer Lion in, yes. uh, <laughs> in the sort of Zoom TV world. <laughs> That's right. He's like, wait, I want my thing. So the, the mix of those two things is, is essentially, you know, is really, I don't know, there's something a little bit magical to it, I think, because I, I'm always fascinated by why it comes in phonetically and I'll, as I'm going to sort of craft the words, like let's say in my mind it um, it came in as like at like like let's say for little guy. Then the little one said to a butterfly. Maybe when I wrote it, it was like I in and out, I had an utter I. Like I like I know that I have to have an I at the end of that lyric, right. the end of that line, or it falls apart. But for whatever reason, it doesn't work if it's an ah or an oh. It's so I, I don't. There's something about that that's like a little bit almost mysterious how it 
how it com comes together. But I do know that it's just about like the influences and the unbelievable amount of other people's songs that I've performed and played. But my favorite thing I'm doing right now in terms of songwriting is with Megan and another songwriter um, named Abigail Giga. So Abigail lives in uh, England. She's got the most glorious voice. It's like it's like the heavens part, and you're, it's just amazing. And of course, Megan's wonderful, and she's in California. But we came together and did a little tour last um, spring, and we. Oh God, it was so much fun, but we did all, we did our original music, mostly mine, actually, in the end, it was a lot of my stuff, but then there, there was, uh, but the three voices together are really beautiful, and the, and we played only, our dedication as a band is to only play music written by women, right. <laughs> just because there's, you know, that's been, more, but I don't know if you know this, but in the music industry as a whole, they're, it's only made up of 5% women. If you look at yeah. audio engineers, if you look at the producers, if you look yeah. at the songwriters, that it's really, really a very heavily male dominated field. Um, and so, you know, it's not like I, most of the music I play is men's songs when I'm doing pep, like, you know, that's probably most of what's coming out. But so we were like, you know what, let's just stick to girls. Let's try to highlight the group. So we're, we're playing mostly yeah, our stuff, but then in every show. That's an extraordinary Which, number, 5%. I know. You can look at the Rolling Stone. Yeah, yeah, there was actually a study that came out, I want to say three years ago, where they looked into that. You know, I don't know any female drummers or guitar players or bass players. I don't know them. Really? I've never worked with a female sound engineer. And I've asked, like, the, the guys that I did the last album with, they literally, like, the bass player was the last bass player for that John Lennon used. No joke. Like, he's that, and, and the producer has worked with, Yoko Ono and, and uh, Carol King, uh, all these people. I asked them, do you know any female audio engineers? No, not one. So it's not, it's like we're just a deeply, uh, the lens is always going, it's not, it's not going through necessarily ever a feminine lens. There's always a, so we were just sort of trying to see what it's like if we're the ones writing all the music and if, the, uh, if we play some cover songs that it's always by a girl and just kind of let that be the, the palette and it's been great it's been wonderful megan, no megan plays bass guitar doesn't she megan plays bass guitar doesn't she? she does sometimes yeah she did yeah. it in that video that's yeah. true but she usually plays um when i say i don't i don't know any like so megan does she works for herself that's what i should say so like we as a band she's a her like i know women that play guitar that accompany themselves like megan yeah um but in terms of like somebody that's just going to come in and oh let me just hire this bass player you know it's 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 all boys but so we're just trying to sort of like change that a little bit <laughs> you know you so but that's five percent that's unbelievable it's, it's unbelievable i spent hours and hours and hours and hours and hours mixing and mastering it and i have a little we're in my little studio right now right. who's lounge here and i did that stuff here too so I've tried, over the years, I've learned to do as many parts of this music business thing as I possibly can, so that the sound that I'm putting out there is. I'm really looking forward to you coming and seeing the Westport Library. Yes! The media Studios, uh, part of that is, it, it will blow your mind. It really will. And I, I, I'm yeah. really looking, I, I mean, I feel so thwarted, you know, you are one of the first people I thought of. Oh, that's and, so nice. You know, having you in there, having something be done as a project there, and then do a performance would just be an awesome little story arc that I'll look forward to doing. Thank you for joining me. So nice Moose. to see you. <laughs> you too. <laughs> Enjoy the moose in space. Thank and, you so uh, much. And, uh, let, let Peter say goodbye for his debut. Peter? He looks Peter. like a cat I had as a child that used to really? leap out from under the chairs and grab you and bite you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm happy we're virtual, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> well, thank you so much for talking with me. It's so good to see you again. It's been My too long. Pleasure. And when this is all over, we'll, you know. Exactly. We will, we will convene at the media studios at the Westport Library. But we'll yes, that sounds good. Cool. Chrissy, thank you. Well, sometimes when wandering slowly from the gravel below me, I heard some mumbling, so I raised my left eye and spotted these small guys. Yo
Just believe it's all night 